Thank you for your presence in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. The Bible says that after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. Amen. Today, anything that has been dead in your life will be resurrected. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is resurrecting dead wombs. Dead dreams. Dead businesses. Dead relationships. Anything that has been dead in your life is being resurrected today in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to be expectant because your expectation determines what you can receive from God. Your expectation determines what you can receive from God. And these prophetic encounters are designed by God to lift you out of the challenges you're going through. God gives us prophets to profit us. The purpose of your prophet in your life is to lift you out of any form of captivity. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 the Bible says that by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt or out of captivity. By a prophet. So it takes a prophet to bring you out of captivity. And by a prophet, Israel was preserved. It takes a prophet to preserve you. And I don't know what you are in, but tonight you are coming out. Amen. I prophesy over your life that tonight you are coming out. Amen. Tonight is your night of liberation. Amen. Tonight is your night of encounter. Amen. Tonight is your night of breakthroughs. Amen. Tonight is your night of testimonies. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Any thing that has delayed tonight God will speed it up Amen. anything that has delayed in your life tonight God will speed it up Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus and so God gives us prophets to profit us 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 the Bible says that by by God, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Amen. So in effect, God gives us prophets to prosper his people. God says in Jeremiah 3, 16 and 17, he said, And I'll give you shepherds or prophets after my own heart who will teach you with knowledge, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So you see, God is the one who gives us prophets. You don't just pick and choose your prophet. God is the one who gives you his prophet after his own heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding and after you are fed with knowledge and understanding two things will be evident in your life verse 16 says that and you shall multiply and increase in the land therefore in the name of Jesus I decree that tonight is destined to be your night of multiplication Amen. and your night of increase. Amen. It's your night of multiplication Amen. 
and it's your night of increase in the mighty name of Jesus nothing can hold you down after tonight nothing can hold you nothing can hold you down from tonight your destiny is released from the grip of the devil no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper you will be the head and not the tail you will flourish and not die i prophesy over you that you shall live you will not die i said you shall live you will not die in the name of jesus so god gives us prophets to profit us god gives us prophets to push us into our inheritance that is why you cannot be casual around your prophet you must never be casual around your god ordained prophet the mother of jesus told the disciples the servants in john chapter 2 verse 5 that whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Why? Because when you do whatsoever he tells you to do, in John chapter 2 verse 5, then you will become what you are destined to become. Whatever he tells you to do, what do you do? You do it. And in Luke chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible says that after they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Let's look at verse 6, verse 6, Luke 5, 6. And when they had done this, done what? Done the word. So your obedience to the prophetic word is what determines your harvest write that down your obedience to the prophetic word is what determines your harvest your prompt obedience to the prophetic word is what determines your harvest so the bible says that when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes when they had this done what did they do they did the word and they beckon upon their partners to come and help them with the catch because it was a heavy catch. So obedience to the prophetic word, prompt obedience, prompt obedience is key. That's why Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2, it says that if you are hacking diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, it shall come to pass if you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. How do you know the voice of the Lord your God? The voice of the Lord your God comes through the voice of your prophet. If you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God and to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Do you see what happens when you walk in prompt obedience? God sets you above all nations, not some nations, all nations of the earth. And it says, and these blessings shall come upon, upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So obedience is key. I said obedience is key. So tonight set yourself up to obey God's word. Set yourself up tonight to obey God's word. As you set yourself up to obey God's word, God would change your destiny somebody's destiny is about to be transformed in the mighty name of jesus for god is not a respecter of persons your responsibility is to do the word and as you do the word you will see 
the manifestations of God's glory in your life. So, prophetic instruction. I wanted to share this service with minimum 10 people on your phone. Share it if you're watching on Facebook. Share it to your friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, share it to your friends on WhatsApp. If you're watching it on our website, share it with family and friends on your WhatsApp or your phone, on your Facebook page, or on Twitter, whatever social media platform you are on, share it. Share it. And as you do that, you begin to harvest the results of your obedience in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, from verse 9 to 11. Paul said, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I have titled, how to be a profitable steward. How to be a profitable steward. And this is part three. How to be a profitable steward. And this is part three. We have already established the importance of becoming a profitable steward. That your level of profitability determines your level of influence in life. Your level of profitability determines your level of influence in life. And yesterday we did say that those who are idle in the kingdom of God are never rewarded by God. Why? Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 the Bible says that but whosoever comes to God must believe that God is and not only that that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Why? Because without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that God is that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God rewards those who work in the kingdom. Glory be to God. God only rewards those who work in the kingdom. Those who are idle in the kingdom of God are never rewarded. Those who are idle in the kingdom of God are never rewarded. As a matter of fact, the devil finds work for the idle hands. The devil finds work for the idle hands. So you can be idle in the kingdom of God. You can be idle. To be a profitable steward, you have to be serving. Jesus said, I am among you as one who serves. I am among you as one who serves. So you have to engage the mystery of serving. So Jesus said, for I am among you as one who serves. He said, for who is greater? He who sits at table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as one who serves. Now what is he saying? 
he is comparing the one who sits at the table and the one who serves. He said, who is greater? The one who sits at the table is greater than the one who serves. When you go to a restaurant and you sit at the table, you are greater than the one who comes to save you because the one who is serving you is, is working for you. They become your waiter. They wait on you. Everything you call, they bring. So Jesus said, for who is greater? He who sits at the table or he who serves? Is he not he who sits at the table? So the one who sits at the table is greater than the one who serves. But yet Jesus is telling us, telling us that yet I am among you as one who serves. So even though he is the greatest of all, he is teaching us the mystery of greatness, the mystery of being a profitable steward through serving. Yet I am among you as one who serves. Yet I am among you as one who serves. And when you serve in the kingdom of God, you don't have to pray to be paid when you are working or serving. Write that down. You don't have to pray to be paid when you are working. When it's time to be paid, God will pay you. And I've come to prophesy to some of you tonight that your paid day has come. Amen. Your time to be paid by Jehovah has come. In this month of November, in the coming weeks, God will reward you diligently. God will reward you abundantly. God will surprise some of you this month. He will overflow you with businesses. Your companies will blossom. Your bank accounts will grow fatter and fatter. I prophesy over your life as a matter of fact this month there will be so much wealth coming into your bank account at one time that you have never had in your bank account for the past 10 years combined. This month, the kind of wealth that is coming into your bank account will be more than the past 10 years of whatever has come into your bank account combined. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I release the harvesting angels to go and harvest, to go and bring in the harvest. I declare your bank account is open for the harvest. Harvest upon harvest. Harvest upon harvest. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any form of financial limitation over you, it is broken tonight any financial limitation over your company it is broken tonight any financial limitation over your church it is broken tonight any form of limitation over you and your family they are broken tonight in the name of Jesus I call in the harvest into your life today now I declare the harvest is coming now. The Bible says that God calleth those things which be not as though they were. So I call in the harvest into your business now. I call in the harvest into your life now. Financial harvest, resources harvest, human resources harvest, material harvest, ah, Marco, Kelebre, buildings. I call for buildings lands i call for lands into your life houses you did not build lands you did not buy the title deeds is being transferred into your name in the name of jesus no more delays i said no more delays no more delays tonight's prophetic encounter is different tonight the spirit of god is doing the unusual in the mighty name of jesus 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't be idle. Be expectant. I said don't be idle. Be expectant. Work in the kingdom. Be a worker and God will bless you. In Jesus name. So quickly. Let's go and look at. 10 foundations for profitable stewardship. Because we want to become profitable stewards. So let's go and look at 10 foundations for profitable stewardship. Number one is love. Number one is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13. The first foundation is love. You can't be a profitable steward if you don't walk in love. Bible says, Galatians 5, 6, faith worketh by love or faith works through love. So if you don't walk in love, you can't be a profitable steward. Glory be to God. So 1 Corinthians 13, 13, the Bible says that, And now abideth, what? Faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. That word charity there means love. The greatest of these is love. The Bible says that now abideth love, abideth uh, faith, hope and charity these three but the greatest between among faith and hope is love is love the bible says love is as strong as death that's how strong love is love is as strong as death ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 Love is as strong as death. Glory be to God. So you must walk in love. Because love is strong. Many waters cannot quench it. Many waters cannot quench love. That's why you must walk in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you must walk in love. Glory be to God. So, sorry, Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. For love is as strong as death. Love is as strong as what? Death. That's how strong love is. Many waters cannot quench it. So if you are going to be a profitable steward, you have to walk in what? Love. And what kind of love are we talking about? The God kind of love. You have to love God. You have to love God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God he is one Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 5 says that for because he is one, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Not with some. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Love is stronger than death. So when you walk in love, you automatically becomes, become a profitable steward. Number two, foundation for Profitable stewardship is humility. 
Number two, foundation is humility. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. It says, Before distraction, the heart of man is haughty. The word haughty there means is prideful. And before honor is humility. So that means uh, before you are honored, humility comes before honor. There must be humility in your life before you can be honored. But the opposite is true. Pride comes before a fall. Before distraction, the heart of man is haughty, prideful, arrogance. That's why many people don't go far because before distraction, the heart of man is haughty. They think they know it all. They come into the church, nothing. You pray for them, they become something little. And then they start talking about you behind your back to other people. The Bible says if you break the head, the serpent will bite. You have to understand how spiritual authority operates. The moment Adam and Eve violated spiritual principles, they exposed themselves to the enemy to be destroyed. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You can't have an umbrella that is covering you from the rain and you are poking it, trying to destroy it, undermining it. At the end of the day, the umbrella is there to cover you from the rain beating you. And if you poke the umbrella, the rain will beat you. So don't go about castigating your set man of God. You have received a little anointing and you think you have arrived. You are nothing. Pride proceeds a fall. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. How many of you remember how vast he was the throne? She became a little popular. She was a queen. The king was having a party and trying to display how beautiful his wife is to the other kings and called for Vasti to come. Vasti was also having her own party. Let's put it this way. Vasti was also having her own women's ministry conference. Her conference became very popular than that of the kings. Many women have traveled from all over praising Vasti. Oh, Vasti, you are the most powerful woman. You are the most intelligent woman. Oh, wow, you, you, are, you are better even than your, the king. You are so ah, Vasti. You know the word. You are very, 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 very knowledgeable in the word. Vasti, ah, you don't need the king any longer. And the king sent for Vashti to come. And the Bible says that Vashti refused to go. Why did she refuse? Because of pride. She has seen a little crowd. She's become arrogant. She has seen a little miracle. She's become arrogant. She has seen a little blessing. She's become arrogant. She forgot who put her on that throne. Are you a choir member in this commission? You are given a little opportunity to sing. You can sing powerfully. Now you are picking and choosing when you can serve and when you can't serve. Really? Wow. Pride proceeds a fall. Vashti was removed. And guess who replaced her? A slave girl. <laughs> Uh, a slave girl was used to replace her. What am I saying? That if you don't humble yourself, you will be replaced. I always say in this commission that the higher God lifts you up, the more intentional you have to be to humble yourself. 
the more higher God takes you, the more intentional you have to be to humble yourself. So humility is key. To be a profitable steward, humility is a key foundation. There are many, many young pastors out there, young prophets, you know, two years in the ministry, five years, ten years, they see a little crowd and they start calling themselves Papa. Papa. Papa of what? Papa of nothing. What about those who have been around for 40 years? What should they call themselves? (laughs) You've been around 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you want people to call you Papa. Say, if you don't, you have to call me Papa. Papa, Pope, Reverend Doctor, Prophet, Senior Prophet, Senior Bishop, General Overseer. General Overseer of what? General Overseer of what? Founder of what? Papa. Papa. Pride precedes a fall. Pride precedes a fall. So humble yourselves. You haven't built anything and you're throwing your weight around. When people are talking, you're also talking. I know where I am in the realm of the spirit, so there are some comments I don't make. There are some issues when they are going on nationally or in the world. People will be saying, why are you not saying anything? Why have you not said anything? I know what God has called me for. It's not everything you jump on the bang wagon and say. <laughs> some of us, the kind of people who listen to us, we can't just speak anyhow. Are you following what I'm saying? So humility is key. Humility is key. Because before honor is humility. You always go through the humility test before you'll be honored. You always go through the humility test before you'll be honored. Number three foundation for profitable stewardship is hard work. Number three foundation is hard work. Genesis chapter 35 verse 17. The Bible says that and it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Somebody say hard work. There is no place for lazy people in the kingdom of God. If you are looking for a place to hide your laziness, it's not in the church. Glory be to God. There is no place for lazy people in the kingdom of God. There is no place for lazy people in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a kingdom for hard workers. So the Bible says that, And it came to pass when she was in hard labor, hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, for thou shalt have this son also. When she was in what? Hard labor. Hard labor there means hard work. Before that child will be birthed, you have to work hard by pushing that child forth. If that church is going to grow and break the church growth barrier, it comes through hard work. You don't just come and stand Sunday morning or, or a weekday and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I feel, I feel something. No. No, no, it's not feelings. It's not feelings. It's not feelings. (laughs) You know, I speak to people who have gone ahead of us for years in ministry. Years. They've been ahead of us for years in ministry. 
and they look and they wonder, they say, how are you able to preach three different messages every Sunday morning? Three different, not same, three different and always fresh and relevant. Not the same. Three different messages every Sunday because you know where I'm going is far. I have to catch up. I started late, so I have to catch up. And all of these messages that I'm preaching now is not just for this generation. They are all on YouTube. If Jesus tarries thousands of years later, they will still be speaking. Tens of thousands of years later, it will still be speaking. Glory be to God. So hard work is necessary to become a profitable steward. Hard work. Hard work. Not laziness. There's no lazy laziness in the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the lazy man. The lazy man says there's a lion on the road. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. The lazy man says there's a lion on the road. He hasn't gone out yet. But he says there's a what? A lion on the road. <laughs> Proverbs 22 verse 13. The lazy man says there's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the street. He has not gone out yet. He hasn't seen a lion. But he's saying there's a lion on the road, on the streets. That's laziness. The Bible says that the sluggard, the lazy man takes the food and cannot put it in his mouth. How, that's how lazy he is. He takes the food from the bowl <laughs> and he can't put it in his own mouth. That's laziness. Proverbs. There's no place for lazy people in the kingdom of God. The sluggard or the lazy man takes food and cannot put it in his own mouth. That's why the Bible says, go to the ant, you sluggard, you lazy one, and learn from the ant. Go to the ant, you sluggard, and learn from the ant. Go to the ant, you sluggard, and learn from the ant. Consider her ways and be wise. Who prepares their meal in, in, in winter, in summer, ready for winter. They have no captain. They have no ruler. Yet they work in ranks. They provide their supplies in summer and gathers their food for harvest, ready for winter. How long will you slumber, oh you sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep and poverty will come and cling on you like an armed bandito. Hard work is necessary in the kingdom of God. Number three foundation for profitable stewardship is labor. Is labor. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor. <laughs> the desire of the slothful. The slothful there is the lazy. The slothful. The desire of the slothful kills him. For he has hands, but he refused to labor. In other words, he refused to work. And yet he has big desires. He has big desires. I want to be a billionaire. Big desire. I want to be a billionaire. Big desire, but lazy. I want to be the richest man in the world. That's a big desire. I want to live in a big mansion, 10 bedroom mansion, big desire. The desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor. It's one thing to have a desire. It's another thing to, to work towards your desire. Glory be to God. 
Stop lazing around. Stop being lazy. Stop being slothful. I have what are they going to give me today? I remember many years ago, there was a young man who came to the church. Very strong, strong. He came and said, Pastor, they are not giving me my benefits. They are not giving me my benefits. I'm very angry. I said, you, you are a strong man. You can work. Why are you looking for benefits from, from, from a government? Go and look for some job and do. Go and clean the gutters. Go and do something. Do a cleaning job. Do something. Do something. Pastor, they are not giving me, they are not giving me my benefit. You are not giving me. You think somebody owes you benefit? Nobody owes you any benefit. Wake up and go and do some job. Wake up and start a business. Be angry with your poverty and do something. Glory be to God. Number five foundation for profitable stewardship is diligence. Number five foundation for profitable stewardship is what? Diligence. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, not in another man's business, but in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Glory be to God. He shall stand before what? Kings and not mean. Mean there means little men, obscure men, men who don't matter. If your gift is not taking you into the presence of kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers and CEOs and so on and so forth, then my friend, you are not being diligent. You are not being diligent. Seeth thou a man that is diligent in his business. You're waiting for somebody to come and be diligent in that business. No one will be. You are the first responder to diligence. See thou a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. Have you seen Maradona, Pele, Ronaldo, Messi? They are diligent in their business. And they are standing before kings. <laughs> Some of you borrow money, pay a lot, to get a huge loan to go and watch when Messi is playing in the finals or Ronaldo is playing in the final. You don't have the money yet, you've gone to borrow. Why? Because he was, he's been so diligent in his business that his business is pulling you from wherever you are to come and pay to watch him. Seest thou a man diligent? Seest thou a church diligence? Multitudes will come from around the world to watch. It's not shouting, it's not screaming. The anointing is in what I'm teaching. If only you can practice what I'm teaching you, you will change your life within one year. If only you practice these things that I'm teaching you. The Bible says that, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Luke chapter 5 verse 6. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Peter said, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will launch out. I will let down the net. And when they had this Done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net was breaking. The net breaking miracle is in your doing of the word. So if you can put what I'm teaching you to practice, your life will be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. He said, I thought this prophetic encounter, I thought he's going to start mentioning my telephone number or my bank number. 
that's your understanding of what the prophetic is all about then you lack understanding my friend glory be to God so be diligent be a diligent steward be a diligent Christian glory be to God number six number six foundation for profitable stewardship is faithfulness oh my god is faithfulness psalm 5 verse 9 it says there is no faithfulness in their mouth their inward part is very wickedness their throat is an open sepulcher they flatter with their tongue oh my god for there is no faithfulness in their mouth how can you be a profitable steward if you are not faithful you are like a chameleon you sit on a blue chair you become blue you sit on a red chair, you become red. You have no convictions. Your life is full of lies. You are unfaithful. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. That means their mouth is full of lies. When they open their mouth, you can't trust them. It's full of lying. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. I pray for you today. That from today, the only thing that comes out of your mouth will be the faithfulness of the Lord. No more lying. Every lying tongue is cut off. From tonight, you will receive the grace to speak the truth in the name of Jesus. He said, their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open grave, open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. They flatter, they lie. You see a sister in the church and say, oh, sister, I love you. You see another one next week, he said, sister, I love you. You see another one, he said, sister, oh, I love you, baby. Oh, I've never seen this hair before. Flattering lips, flattering tongue. May God cut off every flattering tongue in the name of Jesus. Your flattering tongue has caused confusion in a lot of women's hearts. A lot of sisters are confused. You are touching the sisters where you are not supposed to. You are, you, are, you, are, you are saying words to the sisters. You are leading the sisters on. As a pastor, one thing I learned many years ago is never to tell any lady you look beautiful apart from my wife. Not that they don't look beautiful. Yeah, they look beautiful, but it's not my place to say it. Because the moment you say to that sister, oh, today, your hair, I like your hair. You say, ah, ah. The pastor said he likes my hair. The pastor said he likes my hair. And then you go to bed and start dreaming. I, I think pastor likes me. I, I think pastor likes me. I think pastor likes me more than his wife. I you see, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. So faithfulness is key. There must be faithfulness in your mouth. Glory be to God. Then, number seven foundation for profitable stewardship is what? Commitment. Matthew chapter 5 verse 41. Matthew chapter 5 verse 41. It says, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. That's Jesus speaking. Jesus is saying 
that if anyone asks you to go with him one mile, if anyone compels you to go with him one mile, go with him two miles. That is commitment. Glory be to God. That is commitment. It takes commitment to always go to the next level. You want your business to expand, commitment is required. You want your church to grow? How committed are you to that vision? How committed are you to that dream? How committed are you to that business? If you are not committed to it, why should somebody be committed to it? Whosoever shall compel you to go a mile, go with him twine. Go with him two miles. Go the extra mile. Glory be to God. So if you're going to be a profitable steward, you have to be a committed person. Some of you are not committed to this commission and you want to be promoted. God cannot promote you. You are not committed financially. When it's time for tithes and offerings, you don't tithe. You don't give and you want God to be committed to your cause. No, God will not be committed to your cause. Until what is important to God becomes important to you. What is important to you will not be important to God. Write that down. That should help you. Until what is important to God becomes important to you then what is important to you will never be important to God. Why should God care about you if you don't care about his kingdom? Why should God care about your business if you don't care about the expansion of his church? Glory be to God. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I say. You can't just be a member in this commission, whether online member or in-person member, wherever you are from around the world, and all you do is just come watch and go. Come watch and go. It's like coming to eat and go. It's like going to a restaurant and going to eat and go. You eat, you don't pay anything, you go. We are not saying you pay money in this commission, but the principle is true. I took one of my pastors to uh, a conference many years ago, and then we went into a store to go and buy something, something for, for the church, for the streaming department. And when we went, I was inquiring, inquiring, and then I I after they gave me an expert advice, I brought out of that store the most expensive and the best equipment. And I taught him a lesson. I said, you see, when we walk into that store, we went to that store's church, quote and unquote. And the product they had there was what we needed. And the only way I could take that product or that machine out of that store was to give an offering. I paid money. I gave them money and they gave me the product. It is called exchange. Paul said, if we preach to you spiritual things, then it is your responsibility to minister unto us also carnal things. Some of you, you, the churches you go to, I'm not even talking about this commission now because this commission is blessed. Some of you go to other churches. You have never given an offering in that church. Since the lockdown, you have not wondered what is your pastor eating? You've forgotten that your pastor is also a human being. <laughs> there was a lady who, who came to this church one day many years ago and she 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 felt so uncomfortable she felt so uncomfortable and she walked out went and came came back in and then the next thing she did this was her telling us after 
the next thing she did, she gave, she gave a huge offering. And she said she's been going to a particular church for years. She has never given one pound in that in that church. But the first day she walked into this commission, the Holy Spirit nudged her to give. <laughs> and I said to myself that this is wrong. This is a wrong mindset. How can somebody say they go to a particular church and not give there? I said to her, no, that's wrong. You have to give. Not in this commission. As a matter of fact, I have never spoken to any member of this commission one on one before and asked them, Are you tithing? Have you tithed? No. It's not my place. My place is to teach you the word that works. And it's your responsibility to obey the word. If you want a change of situation and a change of life, obey the word, apply the word, and become what the word says. And there are many counselors who are doing the word and who are working in exploits. So how committed are you to this commission? Your commitment is determined by what you give. Are you following what I'm saying? Jesus said, if somebody compels you to go one, one mile, go with him two miles. What is Jesus saying? Give two instead of one. When a time comes and they call for an offering, that's not the time to pretend you are not hearing what they are saying. Glory be to God. It's not the time to, hear, to, to pretend not to hear what they are saying. One of our children tonight during the time of offering was giving me money. She said, this is my offering. I said, I'm not the one who takes the offerings. I've never taken offering in this church. I'm not the one. She's, she's giving it to me. I said, why are you giving it to me? Have you ever seen me collect offering in this church before? Never. Never. I have never lacked. I don't do anything with money. I have more, more. I'm blessed because I understand how this covenant works. It's a covenant of sowing and reaping. If you sow nothing, you reap the well wind. Are you following what I'm saying? So understand when we are teaching you these things, it is not to make a church rich. No, 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 no. Others have caught this mystery and they are breaking through on higher levels. We don't want you to be left behind. We don't want you to be left behind. God said, if I'm, I'm hungry, I will not ask you. The cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. The gold is mine. The silver is mine. Glory be to God, says the Lord. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 to 8. Haggai chapter 6, chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. So, be committed to this commission. Be committed. Be committed in every aspect of your life. Be committed. It says, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake the heaven and the earth. I will shake the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations. Are we seeing it? I will shake all nations. God is shaking all nations. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. I will fill this temple with glory. He's talking about this commission. God said, I will fill this commission, this Solution Chapel International. I will fill this temple with with my glory, says the Lord of hosts. God says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord. Glory be to God. Let's go to the next verse. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord. The glory of this latter house, the glory of this latter temple, shall be greater than the former says the Lord of hosts and in this place I will give peace says the Lord of hosts glory be to God so you see if you want peace it's in this commission 
and every other God ordained commissions. God says, The gold is mine, the silver is mine. He said, If I were to be hungry, I will not ask you. <laughs> I will not ask you. The cattle upon a thousand hills are mine, saith the Lord of hosts. So what is your little offering that you think God really needs? Have you have you have you wondered? Have you noticed that in the Old Testament God will ask them to bring a burnt offering? A burnt offering. What's a burnt offering? An offering that is burnt completely. So when they bring the goat or the cow or the sheep or the bull, they have to burn it completely into ashes. And God looks at that and blesses them. Now, it's a burnt offering. It's burnt into ashes. So it's an attitude of the heart. And yet, even though it's a burnt offering, God says, don't bring me a, a, a goat with one eye. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. It says, as a, a son honoreth his, as a servant honoreth his master, so a son honoreth his father. Malachi 1 6, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then be the father, where is my honor? God is asking you that. Where is my honor? If I am your father, where is my honor? And if I am your master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name. To you priests who despise my name. Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? What way? God says, the table of the Lord is contemptible. The table you have offered, now listen, listen, you have offered defiled food on my altar. But you say, in what way have we defiled you by saying the table of the Lord is contemptible? God is saying, you have de given a defiled offering. What is a defiled offering? An offering with one eye. An offering that is it's it's a bent sacrifice, yet God doesn't want the eye to be one eye. <laughs> it says the table of the Lord is contemptible, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is he not evil? God is asking you. When you offer the blind, when you cheat God, when you calculate the tithe, and instead of giving your 10% and over, and you give God 1%, God is saying, is he not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is he not evil? Now, the lame and the sick, I mean, they are going to be bent. So, so why, why is God concerned? They are going to be bent. <laughs> it's a burnt offering they are going to burn it it will be burned completely ashes into ashes God will not touch one God does not eat that burnt offering so your giving your commitment in your giving is a test of your heart and through the burnt offering God blesses his people he said, when you offer the lame and the sick, is he not evil? <laughs> uh, then God went forth and said, offer it then to your governor. Offer it to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? Will he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. But now, and treat God's favor that he may be gracious to us while this is being done by your hands will he accept you favorably says the Lord of hosts glory be to God I said glory be to God so you see 
Favor is not free. You have to entreat God's favor through your giving. So I say, eh, why is he talking about giving up? Does he need any offering? No, I don't need your offering. <laughs> Uh, well, we are already working in the blessing. We are working in the blessing. We are blessed over and above, not lacking anything, sowing into other ministries across the world, sowing into missions, building churches, <laughs> building churches across the world. Churches that have not that doesn't bear the name of this church, building them across the world. That's what we are doing. Not raising any offering for it. Why will not God not bless us? Because the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and He adds no sorrow. He adds no sorrow with it. It's the blessing that makes. It's not your gimmicks. It's the blessing that makes. It's the blessing that makes. Glory be to God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. We are walking in the blessing of the Lord. Anything I call comes. <laughs> anything I call by the grace of God it comes from wherever I can call it from wherever it comes because God calleth those things which be not as though they were so I operate like my father I need it I call it forth and you wait very soon you begin to see billions being drafted into the kingdom my mission on earth is to raise up men and women who are empowered financially who will be lending to nations and not be borrowing glory be to God very soon some of you nations like the US China the UK Europe will be coming to borrow from you hallelujah glory be to God so be committed to the vision. Be committed to the vision. How committed are you? How committed are you? Be committed to the vision. Your commitment determines your level of blessing. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Number eight. Are you getting something out of this? My God, this has been years of preparations. Teaching you line upon line. Number eight, foundation for profitable stewardship is dedication. Number eight is dedication. John chapter 12 verse 24. Jesus said, for verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Glory be to God. Dedication. You can't be a profitable steward if you are not dedicated. Dedication is required. What does it mean to be dedicated? Being dedicated means you are ready to die. I'm ready to die for this. I'm ready to die for the gospel. I've laid my life down for this gospel to defend the preaching of the gospel except a corn of grain falls to the ground and dies it abides alone you see when you are dedicated you don't force people to follow you they see your dedication and they follow we see God doing tremendous things in this commission Many people being blessed across the globe. Just last month, somebody somebody connected with this commission from Nigeria. We have people connected from all over the world. Connected to this commission from Nigeria. Believing God for the fruit of the womb. 
and all of a sudden within a month God has done it after waiting for 12 years what am I saying when somebody is dedicated to the cause of God God will always honor his dedication by giving people who are following testimonies and I prophesy over you that God will give you unusual testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus number nine is sacrifice number nine foundation is sacrifice Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 the Bible says that and about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying Eli Eli lama sabachthani that is to say my God my God why have you forsaken me when Jesus was on the cross he sacrificed his life you want to be a profitable steward sacrifice go on the cross go on the cross go on the cross you see <laughs> my god my god until you are forsaken by people and you are alone you haven't sacrificed you until you are forsaken by people and you are left alone to burn the midnight candle to pray for that commission to fast for that commission then you are not sacrificing <laughs> it's time to sacrifice it's time to lay your life on the altar when you lay your life on the altar the god of heaven who sees in secret he'll reward you openly and somebody's reward is coming i said somebody's reward is coming i said somebody's reward is coming Amen. your reward will not escape you your reward is coming this month god will reward you because god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him this month god will reward you he will dumbfound the mouth of all your enemies those who have spoken against you god will surprise them god will lift you up god will cause you to be a mighty man a mighty woman you will be known in the gates of the cities in the name of jesus i prophesy over you that after tonight your destiny has changed your destiny has shifted your dreams are becoming a reality in the name of jesus whatsoever your hand touches from tonight it shall flourish whatsoever your hand touches from today it shall prosper in the name of jesus the last one number 10 the 10th foundation for stewardship is loyalty the last one number 10 is loyalty hallelujah the bible says Luke chapter Luke, Ruth, Ruth chapter 1 from verse 14 to 19 the bible says that then they lifted up their voices and wept again and Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye but Ruth clung to her and she said look your sister-in-law had gone back to her people and to her gods return after your sister-in-law but Ruth said entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you for wherever you go I will go and wherever you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people your God shall be my God where you die I will die where you are buried there will I also be buried the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts you and me and when she saw 
that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So loyalty is key. Ruth stayed. And you know the end of the story? Ruth got a husband called Obed. And from that lineage came Jesus. No, Boaz, sorry. Boaz. And from that lineage came Jesus. What am I saying? Be loyal to this commission. Be loyal to your husband. Be loyal to your wife. Be loyal to your pastors. Be loyal to your team members. Whatever you show loyalty to will reward you in the end. Be loyal. Loyalty is necessary. You can't be a profitable steward if you are not loyal. You can't be disloyal and think you're going to be a profitable steward. Nobody wants a disloyal staff member around them. You have to be loyal. You have to be loyal. Peter was unloyal. When Peter saw Jesus being crucified, Peter denounced Jesus three times. But I love Ruth. Even though Naomi's two sons were dead, Ruth said, where you die, I will die. Where you go, I will go. Your people shall become my people. Not because she saw a future, she saw nothing. And I love the Bible says that when Ruth and Naomi entered into Bethlehem, the city rejoiced. The city was excited. Glory be to God. And at the end, Opa, who kissed Naomi goodbye, was the one who missed out. Disloyal people don't go far. Those who are blessed in the kingdom of God are not people who are disloyal. They are those who are loyal. Loyalty is key. Be loyal. Don't be in this commission and be disloyal. Don't be in any church and be disloyal. Be loyal in that church. Be a loyal singer. Be a loyal tither. Be a loyal usher. Be a loyal evangelist. Be loyal to your vision. Be loyal. And as you are loyal, God will bless you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Did you receive it today? My God, my God. Glory be to God. Well, it's time for us to partake of the of the communion. Prepare your communion elements. It's time for us to partake of the communion. Prepare your communion elements. Wherever you are, the healing grace of God is about to flow. Prepare your communion elements. Prepare your anointing oil. Father, we take these communion elements and we separate them unto you. Oh, I feel the power of God so strong. Holy Spirit, flow through this communion. Heal everyone believing you for healing. Visit them at the point of their need. I rebuke the spirit of insanity now. I rebuke the spirit of insanity now. Anyone in any form being chained by any demonic activity, I rebuke the spirit of insanity now in the name of Jesus. As we partake of this communion, the liberation mandate is coming upon you. The power of God is coming upon you. You will be free from today. No demonic activities will operate in your life from henceforth. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ is blessed. Take and eat. The 
the same manner he took the cup and after he's blessed it he said this is the blood the cup of the new covenant we are entering into a new covenant no coronavirus will come near you you will not die through sickness and diseases you will not die through an accident you and your family are covered I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon you I decree and declare that you are immune from every destructive element in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus take and drink Ah, cases have been removed. Cases have been destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, generational cases are being destroyed now. You are being transferred into generational blessings. Generational blessings. Generational blessings. In the name of Jesus, you will be profitable from today. Anything that has not worked in your life from today, you'll be profitable. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare you profitable. I declare your head profitable. I declare your hands profitable. I declare that business profitable. I declare this church and many other churches across the world profitable. In the name of Jesus, I decree that our members are profitable. Our children are profitable. My pastors are profitable. My leaders are profitable. My workers are profitable. My members are profitable. The children in this commission, they are profitable in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's time for us to partake of the anointing. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. The Bible says that on that day. On that day. That day is today. The yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed. The burden shall be removed and the yoke shall be destroyed by the reason of the anointing. Tonight, I decree you are free. I decree your unquestionable liberty, your unquestionable freedom in the name of Jesus. Your unquestionable freedom, your unquestionable liberation, I decree it. I decree it. I decree it. I decree it. I decree it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This oil now is separated. The Holy Ghost takes over this oil as you are anointed. Newness. Speed is coming into your life. In Jesus name. Please anoint everyone. Anoint yourselves in your house. Anoint yourselves in your house. Anoint yourselves. Receive freedom. Receive liberation. Receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the Ikabando Lobro Shindele Brendele Kesanda, Ikabando Lobro Shikaton de Lebrende, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy over your life, you will be profitable, you will be profitable, you will be profitable, you will be profitable. From today, we decree you profitable. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Rabo be katene lebre shanda, in the lekre shando lobo, me mandoro bro ne ketere brende, 
in the name of Jesus I decree you profitable I decree you profitable I decree you profitable everything you do from today it shall profit it shall profit it shall be profitable it shall be profitable it shall be profitable it shall be profitable in the name of Jesus, Reba Bon Delekesha Neyame Nayakatayaba. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive the grace to be profitable. 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 In the name of Jesus, expansion, 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 expansion. In the name of Jesus, unusual dimensions of expansion, healings breaking forth. Oh, unusual miracles breaking forth, unusual miracles breaking forth, testimonies breaking forth in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive it now. Receive your breakthrough, receive your healings, receive it now, receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Receive them now. Receive them now. In Jesus' name. We share the grace. And then I want to ask Pastor Zama to lead us in that song for five minutes as we close. Amen. Glory be to God. You are blessed. 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 Somebody say, I am blessed. Type, I am blessed. Type it in the comment section. Type, I am blessed. Type, I am a profitable steward. Come on, let's sing that song. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We see a victory. We see a victory in the name of Jesus. Although the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We see a victory, Lord. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try My God will never fail Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord There's power There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will prevail And I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how the story ends Oh, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For that battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For that battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For that battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For that battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. You took what the enemy meant for evil, and you 
turn it for good and he turn it for good oh you took what the enemy meant for evil you took what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh you took what the enemy meant for evil you took what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh we're gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for that battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for that battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory took what the enemy meant for evil you took what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh you take what the enemy meant for evil god you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh we're gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for that battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord you took what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh he's turning it around for you he's turning it around you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good oh turn it around god you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good oh we see every i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belong to you lord i'm gonna see every oh we see it lord we see it we see it we see a victory we see a victory for the battle belong to you 